Welcome to the Porsche 911 GT3, arguably the greatest version of one of the greatest sports cars of all time. The engine, the sound, the steering, even the cabin is close to perfection. But above all of that, there's one thing that this car does better than any other. It's got an identity. You won't have to look far to find cars with similar levels of power and performance to the GT3, yet none of them have stayed so true to their original formula. Big, naturally aspirated V8s have been turboed and downsized. Rear-wheel drive has morphed into all-wheel drive security. Three pedals have become two and engine noise is played through the speakers like a song on the radio. The GT3, however, is different. A beacon of gradual evolution among a sea of shape-shifting contemporaries, its presence is growing ever more valued as each generation passes. Of course, it's easy to say that the reason the GT3 still has an identity is because it looks the same as it always has. The sloping rear end, the bulging rear arches and those round headlights that strike fear into the hearts of far more expensive rivals. And yet, there's far more to it than simple aesthetics. And this is why. South Wales on a summer's day, a full tank of Shell's finest and a Porsche 911 GT3. If you were to welcome a visitor from another planet and try and explain to them why performance cars are more than just means of personal transport for us, then this would be a very good way of showing them. The little green men, they're in for a treat. Granted, his intergalactic spaceship will no doubt be quicker and run on the guilt-free energy of long-expired stars and planets, but it's just not the same, is it? Where others have turned to turbos and hybrid power, this GT3 maintains the Philharmonic Flat 6 4-litre that sings the melody of an otherwise bygone era. Even with the sound-sapping GPF, the 992 GT3 still, somehow, manages to almost match the symphonies emitted from the best of Porsche's history book. I mean, there is a radio in here. I haven't tried it. It'd be a bit like wearing AirPods at a Pavarotti concert. But it's there, in case you run out of fuel or something. <laughs> Talking of things running out, it wasn't that long ago that Porsche appeared to kill off the manual gearbox in its GT3 models with the PDK-only 991. Thankfully though, its absence was short-lived and the GT3 now survives as one of the only mega-powerful manuals that you can currently buy. One of the reasons for that is that manual gearboxes tend to spoil those all-important performance figures that manufacturers pretend they don't care about, but actually do. There's no point working hours and hours to squeeze an extra 100 brake horsepower out of the engine if the person behind the wheel changes gear like a comatose sloth. You will lose time and you will lose, more importantly, those internet drag races. For many of us though, that doesn't matter one bit. The mere existence of a 503 brake horsepower Porsche with a six speed manual is enough to make our mouths water and our palms sweat. Click, clack, clutch down, clutch up, heel and toe, hear the revs flare and drop as the plates make contact. It's an experience all on its own and at no point driving this car do you feel the need for any more power? Which is good, as Porsche certainly won't be offering it. The GT3 is now seemingly settled around the 500 brake horsepower mark, yet the Nürburgring lap times continue to tumble, this latest version dipping below the magical 7 minute mark. Added aero features generate up to 150% more downforce and give the car the edge in the high speed corners. 
but it's at the front axle where the 992 GT3 makes its biggest departure. Despite many rivals using more advanced technology, the 911 has always stuck with a McPherson strut setup at the front. It has its benefits, but overall it's inferior. So, for the 992 GT3, the leap has been made and double wishbone front suspension added. The 911 GT3 has always been a handling benchmark, but that doesn't mean it's not without its quirks. Turning into a corner, you could often feel a level of vagueness in the steering caused by a loss in camber as the lateral forces build up on the strut. Now though, that's been eradicated. The front axle is twice as stiff as it was before and together with the redesigned rear suspension, it means that the levels of mid-corner grip have increased tenfold. You can really feel it. And not only does it improve the experience, it allows you to think about exploiting that monster 911 traction even earlier than you could before. Add in standard rear wheel steering, a quicker rack and a widened front and rear track and this GT3 is quite possibly the finest handling road going 911 of the lot. It doesn't matter that it hasn't got any more power or any less weight than the last one, the GT3 has moved the game on in a way that only the 911 can. While others will make wholesale changes to their Halo sports cars, Porsche's unfailing belief in what makes a 911 GT3 means that every design, every new generation, every component is honed and exploited to the absolute limit of what's possible. The result is that you can feel the evolution with this car. Instead of rewriting the formula every time, it just gets better bit by bit. And as others around it change beyond all recognition, this is still fundamentally the same car that 12-year-old you had pinned up on your bedroom wall. And trust me, from where I'm sitting, it is even better than you could possibly imagine it is.